<laughs> hey there so today we have another review this is a uh, fun beer with daniel um especially wanted to share this beer with daniel uh, this is a uh, uh, if you're into old money we've talked about this old money this is old money yeah you sent uh, me a picture of this yeah, and i was yeah. just like man i love that beer <laughs> uh, so this is from please Destro save it <laughs> this is from destroysa this is a panapot reserva so this is their take on a uh dark they call it dark strong now mm -hmm. from flanders mm -hmm. uh 10 percent OG, blah, 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 IBUs, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> I always thought it was funny. Old Fisherman's Ale. I never got what that I was never, I never understood. They have a boat on there, and they called Old Fisherman's Ale. Oh. Then again, the destroyer of beers are um, Belgian in the sense that they're like um, chameleons. Like they, There's no style this sits in, and that's sort of what the fun thing about Belgian beer is. It's not defined by BJCP and all these like tight, you know, they just, they, they make a beer. They have a... You know, their triple tastes like this, and the other breweries taste like that. But they, they choice is even weirder. They're like their Black Albert is not an American Imperial Stout, nor is it British Imperial Stout. It's just their take on Imperial Stout, right? Um, this is Reserva is wine port barrel aged for three years. So this is actually brewed in 2019, bottled a year and a half ago in 2022. So uh, pretty dark color, but yeah. not completely uh, darker than maybe most quads, but not a stout. So maybe like a barley wine, like a dark, actually darker than barley wine. So it's like a, I don't know, like imperial brown ale. Like so, it's not black. I like the 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 color of the. Yeah, it's like very dark cola. Yeah. Like cola dark, maybe darker than cola probably. Yeah, I was already but looking not black, at the yeah. head of yeah. it. Yeah, not much of a head, man. A little tan. Oh wow! Smell that, jeez. <laughs> That's fun. Um, it's. It's not immediately distinguishable of what it is, right? Like it's. It made me think of malt before anything else when I got it up to to my nose. Malt, uh, dark Belgian like that that dark Belgian candy sugar thingy, um, tons of fruit. <laughs> the thingy. Well, they they, they use, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that that sugar that they yeah, use yeah, to ferment yeah, yeah. and then um, that specific type of uh, Belgian candy sugar. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Quality to yes. it. Yeah. Um, but then just loaded with like dark fruits. Like, that uh, also. That also comes through because of the yeast they use mm, as well. Mm, yeah, I think. Um, but uh, what is it? A uh, 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 fruit leather, um, uh, stewed apples, figs, prunes, uh, fig Newton, dark uh, fruits, yeah, plums. Uh, oh, um, uh, dates, dried mm -hmm, dates, mm -hmm, tons of that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, um, sherry, Madeira. Surprisingly, oh, oh, it, port. It, it, it made me think of. Uh, I was uh, having some uh, panettone this weekend. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Panettone. panettone, the Italian. Yeah, the Italian, uh, uh, yeah. you know, like Christmas bread or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cake, uh, cake it, bread, whatever. <clears throat> yeah, but in, in, in Venezuela, it's uh, for some reason traditional mm -hmm. in uh, December to okay. eat panettone. Okay. And the traditional panettone has orange peel yeah. and it has raisins. Yeah, raisins, yeah. And it, it, it gave me a very... Panettone. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Of, it, it, as you mentioned it, aroma to it. I, I, I do smell like a little bit of this kind of orange zest kind of zipping. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it's, and, and that bread is also fermented. Yeah. Panettone is fermented as yeah. well. The, the, the dough is fermented, so it releases some of those aromatic kind of fermented compounds uh, to it. Uh, and uh, and I, I don't know. I kind of got that from, from this too. It's very pleasant. Um, also some barrel character, the big booze and the wine, the port, alcohol, a little bit of a, just Definitely boozy. Hun honeyed and, and that kind of a concentrated port sweetness, port sweetness, honey. But yeah, port, I smell that for sure. Like, big. yeah, I can, I can tell this is going to pack, pack a punch. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Happy we'll find it. Oh man, <laughs> that tastes... This tastes so much older than it is. But I guess part of it is the fact that it is that old. It's, it's very smooth. My God. Yeah. But that's part of it. Like, you know, it's so, like, all the edges are pulled away. And it tastes so old. But they, they sat in barrels for three years, which is not normal for even barrel age beers. Um, so, yeah, this brewed in 2019 and sat in barrels. I mean, we're, we're at 2023 now. So we're going four years on this beer being produced. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I guess part of the, the reserve or part of that's a beer is that... You know, you can age the bottle, but the beer has already got a lot of age to it. Yeah. It tastes old. Like, you know, if you told me this was fresh beer, I'd be like blown away, you know, but. There's no way this could ever be a new beer. Uh, one, one, one thing that, that I. Well, in, in the sense of this, they bottled this a year and a half ago. 
but it's it's it, it's, it's age weird. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. age weird. Yeah, they've already aged it for you. Yeah, which is de- weird because uh, you know most Americans like they think about beer, they buy fresh and they want to age it. But like this, is, they've already gotten it aged for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they've done it already on the back end, you know. So and I guess there really wasn't that much bottle condition that needed to happen, mm. you know, because a lot of a lot of beers you hear, you, you I mean, I know of a lot of producers that will uh, ball condition their beer for a year, you know. Yeah. Just. Just to get let it, it smooth, where they want, and, yeah, you know? yeah. especially with uh, mixed fermentation to let the bread get yeah. into the ball flavors and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 I mean, this one, the, the most of the aging happened pre bottling, mm-hmm. which uh, I guess works out really well too. But I was gonna say that that um, it's kind of cool how uh, aging and, and time is uh, such an important ingredient in beer. You know? mm-hmm. Especially these types of beers. Uh, makes, well, makes specifically this beer. I, I don't think too. it's not normal for most Belgian beer, unless you're talking about Cruz or something like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, so so also the, the the barrel aging, which is not normal. You know, most most are just like bottle bottle conditioned and don't really sit in barrels that long, or mm-hmm. if, if anything, don't touch mo- barrels at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this beer, I notice tons of barrel character. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I get the wine, Venice character. Um, I get the uh, tons of port and that kind of honeyed, um, caramely sweetness. There's also, for sure, a little bit of roasted malt in here. They call it a dark ale, which is not normal for Belgian beer. You know, quad is not, generally not going to have any roasted malt to it, but there's a, just that hint of uh, roast that sort of tells you like it's sort of stout. It's over. a little acrid. Yeah. Uh, stout. Very mild, well integrated yeah. acrid. But stout porter adjacent, which is not normal the for bitterness, Belgian beer. Yeah. Bitterness from, yeah, you from taste the roasted the, malt. The yeah. malt, yeah. A little bit of that in there. It's kind of cool that you, that you, that you caught that. Uh, I wouldn't know. I think that's part of also, I think it's back in my mind too because yeah. I think he mentions that, uh, the brewer mentions that in the um, uh, podcast he did. Uh, Destr- if you want, Destrosa has a episode of Craft Beer and Brewing Magazine podcast, and it's really good. It's, you know, just like, uh, even an interviewer, uh, Jamie Bogner, is like, you know, he's done hundreds of uh, uh, brewer review uh, uh, interviews, and he just learns, like, it's like, that's what you guys do? You know, like, <laughs> like you know, like a lot of times it's like, okay, well, we do this, this, this. It's like, all right, well, every other brewer does this, this, this. But like, when you get to Belgium and you talk about this, they're like, what? <laughs> like, if that's your process? Like, it's not normal. Like, you know, they do yeah. weird things that make their... Belgian yeah. is so Belgian, right? Like that's yeah, the fun yeah. thing about Belgian beer that uh, they don't. It, it it's single singularity by brewery of uniqueness mm-hmm. versus like mm-hmm. it's like well we we you know we lager here and we have these tall you know cylinder conicals and we pitch the same yeast as in the next door brewery and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we order citra and <laughs> you know like you know it's just like all right cool you know you, yeah. did, a, you did another thing that another brewery does cool yeah like, I'm, I'm, I'm not super up to date on things but i know that uh, uh, thinking you know back to when i was reading about beer um that, that the belgians were known for you know breaking frontiers and, yeah you know like kind of being groundbreaking in, in their approach to beer and then uh, the u.s kind of mm-hmm. kind of took that and up a notch, you know, to a point of beer slushies and yeah, you know, beers, uh, beers with vanilla and you know, butterfingers and things like that. But uh, uh, but then even today, going back to a brewery like this, where they're holding on to a lot of tradition, but still kind of bringing in um, new exciting things. Yeah. That actually yeah. work. Belgian breweries don't know? make stouts, and they, they made Black Arbor. You that's what about I'm saying. It. They make an yeah. imperial stout. That's not what normal. I'm saying. They're still and they're, they're spin on it, but they're still brewing it. You know, using a lot of their tradition, holding holding on to to the tradition. Yeah, their equipment. Yeah. And taking some chances on on new things, uh, and uh, the results are incredible. I mean, I know Black Albert. All of the different iterations they did of that beer yeah. were, were really exciting. And uh, this is certainly, I mean, has always been an amazing, yeah. amazing beer. Uh, what do you think about the beer in general? Like, uh, we're having, what do you, what do you, what do you... <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, it's tasty. top, yeah. I mean, again, I, I said I wouldn't really give a number, but since you've been throwing numbers around, whatever you want, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is definitely like, if you want to, if you want to, you, you don't know, to. high, high, like 90, 97, uh, there you, you go. Know? 
the top top beer fans guy. Top top, you know. Yeah. This is this is. I mean, again, uh, ever since I learned about this beer, uh, I, I gotta shout out my buddy Ian Hunter, uh, Ian Hunter and Bill McPhee uh, from Barrel Monks uh, Brewing. Uh, they they were. Uh, the first people who uh, started kind of like throwing this beer around as like an amazing beer to drink and I didn't have access to it. And then when progressive distribution started, you know, um, you know, uh, selling this beer and I knew that I was, it was accessible, like I could buy it yeah. for, for the bar. Uh, I started getting it and I mean, it's always been one that every time I see it, uh, at a bar or or I see a bottle somewhere I, I just have to I just have to pick it up you know it's it's just yeah amazing <clears throat> yeah it's a very um especially the reserve I feel is relatively unique um, mm -hmm. the regular panapot will taste a little bit more like a quad to you mm -hmm. this is a whole weird animal like yeah because quads are not generally aged like this you know mm -hmm. this is a four-year-old beer um mm -hmm. it's tons of oxidative character um they again, they pre-aged it for you. So like, you know, um, so you get a lot of that sherry character, um, a little bit of umami comes in, that mm -hmm. soy saucy, mm -hmm. soy old, saucy yeah. old beer, yeah. Um, a lot of the port and wine character comes in. The beer is actually dry, but has that impression of sweetness up front, but it does end up drying. Um, not a lot of spritzy carb on this guy, because some of the quads can be like, you know, yeah. shooting out of the glass. Yeah. No, this, this is, is not like no, that no, no, yeah. no, yeah. And um, I like, wouldn't like that actually, not a fan of that. Myself. Some some of it works like you know like a like a Belgian double or Duval Duval literally can't be the same beer without that carbonation to it right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, 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 some beers are defined by their carbonation. Um, this beer sits almost still to me. I mean, there's a little right. bit. Of carb. It's really really flat. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a little bit of carb to it in a good way. Yes, and that 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 that, that plays with the aged character of the characteristic of this beer. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly very impressed how. Uh, how much character of age they've gotten out of the spear mm -hmm. with um, I mean it's not normal to age a beer for three years in a barrel but it seems so much older than that I would you know I would tell you know if you told me like hey I'd pull this out of my cellar and it's been sitting in there for like a decade I'd be like okay but the bottle date on this guy is you know if you want to call it they call it bottle date 2022 <laughs> you know if, if any world this is fresh it's in their mind right? Yeah. right right and it yeah. tastes so old to me well, I mean, but you know why? I mean, regardless that, of the bottling date, we know, the we know beer, that it's yeah. just a beer that aged forever. You know. um, so. Yeah, but following with the nose, it's just tons of fruit, um, prunes, dates, fig newton, um, mostly dates. I get a lot of that like dried date, like you mm -hmm. know, fleshy character. Mm -hmm. um, maybe dried plums as well, raisins. Um, there's that light hint of roast that plays quite nicely. It's a uniqueish kind of beer. Like I don't, I can't imagine too many beers that sort of taste like this. It, it has a little bit of quad character. It has a little bit of bourbon barrel aged or port barrel aged bar, bar, uh, barley wine character. It has a little bit of like a barrel aged imperial style character. So it sits in that blend. And, and their breweries like um, what Firestone with their anniversary beers. Like if they went lower on Parabola one year and went heavy on the, the barrel aged quad they make and that blending, I feel like that's what this sort of tastes like. But then this one has more of that, like super forward of the wine and port barrel aging, you know, because generally with the Firestone beers, I assume most of it's going to be uh, burn barrel aged, right? Um, but it has that kind of nuance, right? Like it tastes a little bit like you blended a quad, a barrel aged quad, a barrel aged barley wine, a barrel aged stout, and got somewhere there with it. And that's a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing about this beer. Um, if you are interested in that kind of blending and um, the Firestone anniversary beers, you don't have to only focus on America. There's a brewery called Disroy's. <laughs> you know, yeah. very few breweries outside of the country do that kind of weird, funky Absolutely. stuff. Of like, let's just barrel age a bunch of beers and blend them together. And the crazy thing is this is one, ideally one stream of beer. Like they just made one beer that sort of tastes like this and age the shit out of it. And that's what it tastes like. So it's not even blending a bunch of styles. It just is a chameleon of a beer that tastes like a bunch of different styles in one glass and one beer. Um, so rating? Man. Thank you for sharing, brother. Yeah, yeah. This is incredible. Um, I'm going to give it a... What's your... That's a good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of went high, but then again, you know, I don't have the the, the history of uh, ratings, so... <laughs> I'm going to... I'm, I'm... So part of it is that I'm not like, oh my God, this is the best beer I've ever had in my life. But then the other thing is, I like about it is that 
there are very few beers that taste like this. And I always enjoy that. Like the uniqueness of a beer is so important because, you know, when you can have great examples, a bunch of, of one style, you know, like what's the point? Like you can, you know, you can find it somewhere else and, you know, it's always fun to pick out differences, but you're not going to find that. Like this beer is this beer. <laughs> like how many beers taste like Pontiped? Pontiped Reserve. No, not like, oh no, few to none. So I'm going to give it a 97 as well. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. No, 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 it's a good, yeah. Until next time, cheers, later. Okay.